My name is Dr. Lisa Newman, and I have the distinct honor of serving as chair for the steering committee of the American Association for Cancer Research, Cancer Disparities Progress Report. We have seen some narrowing in uh, mortality from cancer between blacks and whites in the United States. Despite this progress, however, important disparities persist and the explanation for these disparities is multifactorial. We need more research to understand the social determinants of health and the socio-political systemic racism impact factors that influence cancer outcome disparities. But we also need more research to understand tumor biology and genetics and the role that these factors play in disparities. This AACR Cancer Disparities Progress Report will explore all of those different explanatory factors behind uh, out cancer outcome disparities, and they will also outline strategies for addressing the research that is necessary and for addressing the social determinants of health that need to be uh, corrected in order to achieve cancer health equity. This AACR Cancer Disparities Progress Report will highlight an entire series of action items that we all carry some responsibility for addressing in the effort to patients. We need to ensure that uh, universal access is available for internet because we rely upon internet that much more in the wake of the COVID pandemic for healthcare. We need to address systemic racism and the fact that uh, African-Americans, Hispanic, Latina, Latinx individuals, and indigenous Americans continue to suffer from disproportionately high rates of poverty and lack of access to appropriate health care, appropriate cancer care, and they lack access to clinical trials. Clinical trials and clinical research is a hugely important strategy in addressing cancer disparities. And the AACR Disparities Progress Report will outline many of the cancer research efforts that are necessary in achieving cancer health equity. Hello, this is Steve Paterno, Deputy Director of the Duke Cancer Institute. It's been my privilege to serve as co-chair to the 2022 AACR Progress Report on cancer disparities. I also had the privilege way back in 2007 to co-chair the first AACR think tank on cancer disparities, which gave birth to the AACR's annual conference on the science of cancer disparities, now in its 15th year. Huge advances have been made on the research front over these past 15 years, which has helped us move from simply studying the disparity towards achieving cancer health equity. Cancer disparities research is necessarily transdisciplinary in nature because the drivers of cancer health disparities are multi-level in nature. Disparities research spans the cancer control continuum, including in the areas of early detection, diagnosis, interception, treatment, survivorship, and even end of life care. And it includes basic, translational, population, behavioral, clinical, policy, and implementation sciences research. One of the most exciting areas of research is what I call convergence science, which is research focused on understanding how the multi-level drivers intersect with each other, as well as implementation of evidence-driven interventions at each level. Leading edge innovations in convergent science is critical because cancer disparities are driven by a complex interplay between societal factors, such as structural and systemic racism, social factors such as socioeconomic status and educational attainment, lifestyle and environmental factors, such as diet and pollution, institutional level factors that affect access to care, and individual level factors, such as ancestry related genetics and biology. We are gaining important insights into how these factors impact and influence each other in ways that can either mitigate or exacerbate cancer disparities. 
Oncology clinical trials is an area of research that is critical to advancing the future of cancer care. Unfortunately, most clinical trial enrollments do not reflect the population demographics of our society, with gross underrepresentation of persons from marginalized or minoritized communities. The effect of this lack of diversity is clear, a severe limitation of the real world impact of each such trial. Recently, the Duke Cancer Institute and other cancer centers have conducted trials that are purposefully equitably stratified by self-identified race. And some of the results have been astounding. For example, in prostate cancer, black men generally come into these, these trials with more advanced disease, but respond better to several different modes of therapy. That's an extraordinary discovery. We are learning more and more about how the biology of tumors in patients from different racial or ethnic populations can differentially affect the aggressiveness of the cancer and its response to therapy. And this type of research has huge implications, not only in mitigating the disparity, but also in advancing the quality of care for all men diagnosed with prostate cancer. Hello, my name is Mariana Stern, and I'm a professor of population and public health sciences at the University of Southern California. Due to multiple social determinants, often driven by structural racism and societal injustices, minority and underserved populations tend to have greater exposure to factors known to cause cancer, which increases their cancer burden. I will share a few key examples. Tobacco products account for about 20% of all cancers among adults. Many minority and underserved communities, including sexual and gender minorities, have been targeted with higher concentration of tobacco retailers among their neighborhoods, which leads to higher use of tobacco in these communities. Obesity and healthy diets and lack of physical activity can also explain about 20% of cancers, and minority and underserved populations are more likely to suffer from these conditions. In part, this is due to living in neighborhoods where it is not safe to exercise outside or not having access to recreational facilities or affordable healthy foods. Alcohol consumption, which can increase risk of six different cancers, is highest among men with lower education and income and among some sexual and gender minorities. And knowledge about the link between UV radiation and skin cancer is less common among Black and Hispanic individuals. There are multiple pathogens that can cause cancer, and we can prevent these with appropriate treatments and vaccinations. However, uptake of vaccinations and access to screening and treatment is not equal for all. The human papillomavirus, or HPV, which causes nine types of cancer, is a key example, with many minority and underserved individuals not being vaccinated against HPV and many women not getting screened. Where we live can also affect our cancer risk due to exposure to air pollutants and chemical agents known to cause cancer, which happens mostly to racial and ethnic minorities and those living in poverty. Finally, there's growing evidence that stress-inducing social factors such as structural racism and discrimination can contribute to the development of cancer. What should we do to reduce these disparities? We need to stop predatory marketing from the tobacco industry, which targets minority populations. And we need to ban menthol cigarettes, which foster tobacco and mental justice so that all neighborhoods have low environmental cancer causing agents. We need to support the World Health Organization's Cervical Cancer Elimination Initiative by increasing HPV vaccination screening and treatment. And finally, we need to invest in more research to identify additional cancer determinants, as we still cannot explain all cancers and cancer disparities with the knowledge that we have. Thank you very much. Please do take a few minutes to view this video, which will highlight and summarize the content of this very important American Association for Cancer Research, Cancer Disparities Progress Report. A lot of different things happened from when I first felt the lump. The breast MRI, the ultrasound, the biopsy, those things combined to be able to tell the doctors that it was triple negative breast cancer and it was stage three. When my PSA was taken and the results came back, it was elevated. And when I went to the urologist, I was informed that I had prostate cancer. 
I was devastated. 50 years that I was only the second male patient he had ever encountered that had these symptoms. And then we got a biopsy, and then a few days later I had a mastectomy. I didn't think I could have breast cancer more than once. Unfortunately, I had it three more times. And my husband said, you can handle it, and you should get educated more on it, and then go out and pay for it. We are indeed making great strides in cancer treatment and cancer outcomes, but gaps exist. There are a lot of disadvantages for Latin community. There are a lot of people that are financially vulnerable. Having to choose between dedicating time to go to your treatment or actually going to work. The main barrier that I uh, experienced was psychologically. Am I going to be able to maintain this level of health <laughs> that I'm at now, where things get worse for me? My queer identity had to be identified throughout the process by me referring to my wife. It was never asked of me, and I think that's something that could be implemented if intake forms asked more specific questions. I'm Hawaiian, I'm proud to be Hawaiian, but I want Hawaiians to live and learn more about cancer. Being an advocate, I found that people still had questions. They didn't know what doctors to look for. They didn't have transportation. They didn't have insurance. We need to make sure that we support patient navigation services. Uh, navigators can be critical in making sure that patients can get from point A to point B to point C across the continuum of diagnosis, treatment, and survivorship. I was certified as a clinical interpreter, so I am able to stay with the patient from the time of the diagnosis. I am explaining step by step what is the treatment plan, and after the doctor is gone, so all the questions about what is your insurance, uh, how I am going to help them to actually make all the appointments for all the tests that are required to complete the diagnosis. All of these aspects of cancer care have a cost, and that cost can be quite high for an individual that is already dealing with a financially constrained budget. Having advocates getting out there in the community, educational workshops, providing money for transportation. If a woman needs to go and get a mammogram, not being punished, I guess you could say, if she has to miss work for that. We understand that we need to address the lack of diversity in the healthcare workforce. If we improve the diversity of the healthcare workforce, we will have a stronger workforce that provides better care to patients. We will have a more creative healthcare and research workforce that will design better clinical trials and research programs. When they came to me and said, would I like to participate in a broad study about the relation between cancer and genetic variations? I was only thinking that I could contribute and not necessarily be impacted positively by it. But that's how it all started. The colonoscopy clearly showed that I had a mass that was developing. So we found colon cancer in an early stage. The surgery was very successful. He or she that finds anything early have a greater, better outcome. Early detection is critical and it's key to the Black community. Whenever we discuss disparities, almost invariably the conversation turns into a debate regarding whether race is a socio-political construct or whether it does indeed have any relevant biologic significance. And the answer, is, of course, is that it's both. Race is also linked to ancestral genetic components and some of these ancestral genetic components can impact on cancer risk. For example, the risk of a, the biologically aggressive triple negative breast cancers is twice as high in black women compared to white women in this country. We see higher rates of inflammatory breast cancer in African-American women. And we also see higher rates of male breast cancer in the African-American community. Education is the core of health and wellness. I would definitely recommend clinical trial to someone 
If you're a person that is going through the type of cancer that this clinical trial can help with, I would highly recommend it. It's a way to improve your quality of life and help with research in the area of, uh, of cancer, to help others. And that's one of the things that I looked at. You know, I'm going to be helping others by going through this clinical trial in addition to helping myself. I believe that studies and clinical research should be expanded to minority communities and have a broader view of the impact of cancer in these communities. If we really gave more money for research, we could put an end to cancer as we know it today. All of the advocacy work that the AACR does in terms of supporting legislation and making sure that our government understands the importance of sponsoring clinical research. And so when you think about it, from a policymaker or a legislative point of view, we're everywhere. We are your relatives. We are your siblings. We are your colleagues. We are in Congress with you. We are the firefighter who comes to your house. We're the nurse who takes care of you. And so how would you treat yourself? Well, then that's the kind of policy you should implement for our community. I think we should have more funding towards cancer research for the overall health of our nation.